So welcome to this episode of Bad Decisions with Jim Banks. I'm absolutely delighted to have as my guest today, Anton Jolk, who is the head of influencer marketing at Duda. I've known Anton for quite a few years. He used to, to do a similar role when he was working at SEMrush. He was involved with webinar management and podcast management. He was also helping uh, Jason Barnard, who was my guest on episode two of Bad Decisions with Jim Banks. And in actual fact, I think it was Anton that, that said, hey, you should have Jason on as a guest. He'd be a great guest. And he absolutely was. So Anton, welcome to the show. And thank you for in, inviting uh, Jason to come on as a guest for me. Thanks, Jim. I'm absolutely thrilled to be on your podcast. Yes, I did suggest Jason. And I think Jason, one of the most entertaining guest he's singing songs and, and all do all kinds of things unfortunately i cannot have much much more boring uh, boring go- guests but i'm absolutely happy to be, be here so so anton obviously i knew you originally like i said when you were sam russian at that time you were based in ukraine you've now moved on to many oh. countries talk, talk to us a little bit about that journey obviously all that's happening in ukraine and where you are now uh, well uh war is more than two years old uh started at uh, february 24 uh 2022 two years a little bit and uh, because of the way we left country we left country i, I still remember the date uh, april the 8th 2022 so um just just over two years so we stay in poland for one month or because we want to get some some documents for our daughter uh, passport it d- didn't happen at that time it was completely just just chaos chaotic so we decided okay and we went to uh, eventually to spain because i used to live in spain and i speak spanish i have still friends so it was much easier for us we stayed in valencia for a year and after that we moved to Bratislava, Slovakia, mm. because our daughter got into university here. She already dropped out, unfortunately. She didn't like it at all. I mean, just completely. So it was kind of a waste of, of journey. But uh, anyway, so now we're in Bratislava, uh, Slovakia. And actually, my family wants to go back to Kiev, which I disagree with, because I th- it's still war zone, and who knows what we might try to move to Kiev huh? temporarily in June and see how, how, how it goes. Okay. One of the things that kind of struck me in that period, like it was not long after the pandemic had finished, so we'd gone from one major catastrophe to another major catastrophe. We were watching it all unfold, couldn't believe what we were seeing really. I think the community, all the people in the search community, PPC, SEO, influencer marketing, mm-hmm relying on you to be the, the the guy who was on the ground able to talk about what yeah we- i wasn't really in in the war zone no, no combat uh, anything like that uh, where, where i was yeah but i remember when war started uh, i i received literally hundreds of messages asking how i am so i decide uh, on a facebook just 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 to you know, the not uh, as 100 messages personally. I just put this coffee shot every day. So every day I was uh, making a picture with, with, with the coffee, with and, uh, the coffee like that, and saying say something. So just 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 say, okay, I'm still alive, guys. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for me, again, I, I used to kind of wake up and that was one of the first videos I would go looking for was you with a cup of coffee to kind of make sure that, one, you were still alive, to what was going on yeah. so yeah it was was a first fall for me and i guess it was a first fall for almost everyone yeah so I, I know that the context of my my podcast is bad decisions with jim banks but one of the good decisions that you made was you set up a charity to help support animals because again i mean we all hear of the human <laughs> impact so t- tell us a little bit about the, the charity Okay, uh, it's it's not official charity. I don't have any license or anything, but I, I believe me, all money go goes to a small shelters. I did. We have no overcost or in anything like that. I uh, in the Ukraine. Ukraine is is a poor country. It's not uh, much of a government or any any other support for people who run in small shelters. When I say in small shelters, it's usually they run in their own flats or, or houses. And it's between usually like 30 to 30 cats of cats and dogs to a hundred, something, something like that you can imagine. It's small, but it's not really small. Uh, most of the time, even before the war, uh, those people, they rely on, on a 
charity money people donated money to them but it's usually just just a personal donation but when the war started there became many more uh stray animals or animals without home and uh, on the other hand people had much less of spare money to, 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 to donate so i decide we, we can we can help and then uh, at the beginning of the two years ago, uh, the feeling was uh, on the West, where, where you are, United States, United Kingdom, the rest of the Western Europe, people really wanted to help. And it was very, very, very easy to collect money and to help. Now it's a completely different story. People, uh, war is in the third year, people can get used to or even tired of, of the war. So. People donate much, much less money, so it's more, more difficult. Uh, we tried uh, last, no, in February 29, we done a marathon of four and a half hours of SEO and PPC. Actually, talk. I was not talking about uh, charity, but uh, we it was a cha charity uh, uh, stream. So we tried to collect money, and uh, we had uh, uh, actually sponsors. We collected about six thousand dollars, which is a huge amount of money. Which is for shelters. Again, I think the, the the one thing you know, I, I don't think people are giving up on on kind of Ukrainian issues and and everything else. I just think part of the challenge is that the, the kind of the spillover into other countries of the impact of things like the war. I mean, the war has been very harmful, kind of to the globe. Yeah, and 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 there were more wars since then. We we had war in Israel as well. So always yeah. attention partly goes there and. The, Yes, understandable. Yeah. So let, let's turn things back to um, to kind of work for a little bit. So so you're head of influencer marketing at Duda. Um, what what does that kind of like that that entail? Because again, I mean, a, a lot of the, the people listening in are probably new to the digital marketing industry, right? And I think influencer marketing is one of those things, a little bit of a kind of unknown entity. I think a lot of people. Talk, see, they see the Kardashians and assume that that's what influencer marketing is all about, but there's more to it. So perhaps you can kind of tell us a little bit more about inf influencer marketing and specifically what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, mainstream of influencer marketing right now today is exactly this Kardashian uh, example when you have someone usually in, in Instagram who's got an audience and you are, and you have you have your product whatever your product is and you're saying hey uh, uh, this is my product this is money uh, take my money make a video and, uh, and and put your video my, your video about my product on, on your channel for your audience because you think the uh, audience is relevant uh, it's, it's it's a mainstream when i started i started in 2015 it wasn't really like, like that uh, at that time i think influencer marketing wasn't really a, a thing so but uh, what I do what what we do is slightly different, or, or maybe very much different, because I would call what I just 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 explained. I wouldn't call it influencer marketing. I wouldn't call it creators marketing. So creators make a video, uh, and uh, you basically buy buying it. Uh, it. It's all good if it if it works. It's fantastic. I usually create it doesn't care about your product. He just just he or she just paid money. Get video done. Go to next next, next product. Maybe even to your competitors. Uh, and it's how, how it works. We work different way. We work a way of trying to establish a relationship uh, with particular influencers. So we, we should know who in influencer are. Uh, uh, when I work at Samrush, it was very very easy because it was very clear community of SEO and PPC. PPC probably at less extent, but still clear community people uh you can you can see them on twitter nowadays we don't have a twitter anymore. so but it's still probably community there uh you can see who support whom uh, and, and 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 everything and you can clearly see i, I don't know uh for seo um, you can say okay body Schwartz is obviously an, an influence an influencer uh, yeah. for seo and for for ppc okay we have top ppc heroes of every uh, top 10 ppc or top 10 25 ppc heroes every and we know for example jim banks one one of the influence for for ppc and you try to establish i try to establish personal relationship 
uh, with uh, influence and then after convert this personal relationship into slightly more institutional uh, relationship. So convert from you from me being my personal friend. Okay, friend maybe it's just too big, but but uh, uh, into brand advocate but of course if you like my brand so for example it's talking about uh semrush uh you could be semrush or you can be hrefs for people if you hrefs you probably would never ever move to semrush it's, it's, it's fine no no problem about that uh, it's like a, your android or your apple uh, uh whatever you choose if you if you stay with apple you probably will never go and buy a android phone uh so if you uh, genuinely open to work with semrush and you are influenced like yourself uh jim uh, i was, was trying to establish personal relationship and after that moving to uh institutional to make it out of out of you uh making um brand advocate and uh, i use uh, webinars live streams podcasts as well but usually podcasts with a video like your one uh, uh as a main tool for for this uh, because obviously it would be much probably would be much better if we, we could sit down and, and drink a coffee with you today uh, and have uh, your podcast just 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 sitting just sitting uh, uh, together but it's much more difficult more costly and uh, a lot of limitation uh, doing it online is much easier uh, and uh, cheaper and everything is, is so it's why this is the way we're doing it we try to give influencer a uh, possibility to speak up to give our own audience to bring mountains to give extra exposure uh, to sell influencer to our uh, audience and this way kind of to steal your soul this is the idea yeah so i mean it, it's interesting so so when i i always remember when you first were, were working with semrush and you invited me to kind of come along i think you, you invited me to do a webinar or something like that or maybe a podcast um again for, for me it's like as much as i i i liked semrush i really liked you i mean for me it was about knowing liking and trusting you as a person rather than the brand that you were representing and i think so many companies that's where they make the mistake they think it's all about the company and the brand and it's really about the people that are representing the brand right and again you've always been this is, a phenomenal advocate for the brands that you've represented so yeah but this is this is very very interesting point uh, and the same rush at certain point uh, they can see which way we would go we as a same rush uh, so uh, and the way would be for example keep people like me who would have deep deep personal relationship with influencers and be known or go into team team mode so using templates sending uh, and have as many influencers in database as as possible sending templates and basically uh same rush or whatever uh, would work with you and you don't really care who is it you just see semrush team and, and everything which way to go and semrush as many big semrush it's, it's a corporate corporation already uh many of them choose the second way doing it through team why uh because it's makes uh, a corporation much less vulnerable because for example just imagine you have people like me for example and i know i know a hundred of influence and i have personal relationship and as you said you join it because you knew me personally just imagine i will i will uh, uh move from from uh, uh from a team from a company i would be big hole yeah and the company big company decided okay we will google we're gonna go safe away uh we we will try to arrange a team and you as an influencer you don't really care who who, who is that is a gym is is, is is mary or the john whoever doesn't matter you only remember is it's it's a same rush and it's much safer it's maybe less effective in terms of particular one uh, because you, this way you don't don't create personal relationship and personal relationship I think is incredibly incredibly powerful thing and in in our industry or in all digital machines is very important who know who yeah I think it's extremely important uh, so but if you big brand you 
probably think no i, I, I prefer to play safe away uh that so if for example if anton Schulke tomorrow we, we will go to another company who cares we we, we, we won't we yes. really feel it so this, this is the thing yeah. yeah that was that was always the thing like i i remember when i worked with google when they first started the pre-ipo google was very different than the post-ipo google so once they sort of become a publicly traded company all of a sudden things change. And I think in some respects, the same thing happened with SEMrush. I mean, I still love SEMrush as a company. I think they're phenomenal. Um, but again, I think the, the dynamics of the business changed significantly once I'm a publicly traded company because all of a sudden their main, if you like, their main kind of commitment was to the shareholders and adding value to the shareholders um, rather than necessarily the, the kind of the influencers and people that helped to get them to, to the size of the company that they were to enable them to kind of become a publicly traded company. So, um, and, and again, I mean, at the end of the day, ultimately when people sort of start up in business, they're, they're looking to kind of to grow it. Some people are looking to grow it to give themselves a, a decent lifestyle. Some people are looking to grow it to sell it. Um, some people are looking to kind of grow it for other reasons. And, and, Clearly, Semrush as a as a business did incredibly well to kind of grow from like a fledgling company to kind of the size that it is now. Um, but you know, but at the same time, I think the the community, the the influencer marketing community, can make a huge difference. To the impact that you have, and to your point, I definitely think that um, you know it, it it is to kind of get it get it going. It is important to have people that, that everyone knows, likes, and trusts to help get things off the ground. Yeah, I think I think it's incredibly important. But we we've seen different examples. We've seen Moss, for example, around Fishkin. Everyone remember that because I'm pretty sure during the around Fishkin time, most people, Moss and around Fishkin, they thought it's the same. And when he left, it was slightly. I feel kind of slightly. What, what is this? Moss around Fishkin and Fishkin Moss. So uh, for big company, it might be a. Uh, a problem actually having uh, such such a leader and such a recognizable uh, face i think it's 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 a huge advantage and you have to use it but sometimes it might be a problem if if, if the way it goes it's funny I've, I've got a funny like i say a funny story it's not a funny story at the, at the time so way back i think in probably like the very very early days of seo moz uh, we were pitching, so I was working with a company and I literally just sold my agency to a company in North America. Um, I think it was like 2006, 2007. Um, I sold a, a business. We were trying to win a piece of business and we were in the sort of final two for the pitch. And we ended up losing that business and the company that we lost it to at the time was SEO Moz, right? So this is for Moz, the software company. This was SEO. They were doing SEO. So I phoned up the, the prospect and kind of said to them, well, why, why did why did you choose them over us? And they said to me, and this is like a really, really important lesson that I learned out of the process. They they said the reason it to to SEO Moz and Rand rather than to you was Rand took the t the time and trouble to actually get on a plane, come and see us, and actually spend time with us face to face. And for me, that was such a an insightful uh, thing that that for me, I've made that part of my go-to strategy now if i'm trying to win business keep business as much as it's expensive to do it sometimes it's, it's important for you to be able to kind of go and and physically as you say sit down and and have a cup of coffee have a have a drink whatever it might be but make make the effort to kind of go and, and win it it's not just about your powerpoint your deck your case studies your testimonials Yes, all those things are important, but they're not anywhere near as important as as forging a strong bond relationship. So for me, I, again, I, that was 2006, and I've used that story ever since then to kind of try and, and ensure that I'm not losing business by not being personal enough to go and take time to, to make the prospective customer feel important to me. Oh, yeah, I absolutely agree, as I say. So, Very so clear and, and for that, <laughs> Less, my, no, my, I agree. Uh, and it's a classical uh, example of uh, making build, building things on a personal relationship, which is much stronger and, and, and probably uh, 
probably people and in terms of churn and everything if people have a personal relationships they probably will approach you and say look we're not happy because of this and that and if they no no relationships they just just cancel it and go to another company uh but how many a personal relationship you can handle this is another thing so if you're big big huge company and you you just just go for you probably won't be able to if you it's a sm- reasonably small team as completely different matter for example talking about SimRush, when i joined them in i think 2016 uh they have 400 people when i left uh five years uh, later uh they have thousand plus and already been traded on nasdaq already been publicly trade company Co- completely diff- different things yeah um, so, to t- I mean, obviously, we talked a little bit about um, influencer marketing, kind of at a holistic level. Can we kind of like drill it down specifically into Duda? So, t- tell us a little bit about Duda and what Duda does as a business, right? Because again, I've got I've got some people that I knew from <laughs> back in the day when Duda first started. I'm sure it's a very different company uh, then to now. But uh, t- tell me a little bit about Duda and what what Duda is all about. Okay, Duda is CMS. And the website builder, which is not the same. When I moved, I thought it's the same, uh, but, but, but it, it's not. But do this both. Uh, it's uh, similar to WordPress, or this smaller, of course. But uh, uh, do this is not a new company. Uh, every company is startup, but Duda is not a new company. Duda will be 14, one for years this year, which probably a veteran company in our industry. Uh, main audience for do the CMS is, is a software you actually produce websites uh, using use the software, this software. Uh, do the main audience for a long time was, uh, still is, uh, agencies, digital agencies. Uh, usually it works this way. Digital agency use to the to uh, create websites for clients. We're talking mainly this not about boutique agency, but agency who works with small medium sized businesses. So, for example, if you uh, if you agency and you work with a local clients like uh, I don't know a uh, plumber plumber in in Houston, mm-hmm. if you're in Houston. Uh, so uh, and a plumber doesn't really want to deal with website or anything, he go, goes to your agency and says, hey, I need a website. So you build them a website using Duda. Why using Duda? Because there are some, some advantages of WordPress. I'm not saying Duda better than WordPress, but for agency, probably Duda is agents who deal with reasonably simple website for small medium sites. So Duda probably better, more, more, effect, more, more effective. You can do websites three, five times faster and you, you don't need to search passwords and everything. Okay, but I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna try to sell the Duda right, right now. I'm not in sales. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is a main, uh, uh, and, and this agency says they're not only doing website designs, of course, uh, after they're done a website, they, they, they say, they're saying to you, okay, we've done websites, fantastic website. Do you want, we can just give it to you. You can, you can handle, you can maintain, you can change everything. Oh, you want to pay us small retainer and we keep you uh, and we will be updated. Obviously, plumbing in Texas, in Houston, we say, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll pay retainer. Uh, so it's how they build, build the client base. And after that, they go and say, okay, you have a website, but you know, uh, you, we, we, we can get you some visibility, SEO, local SEO, PPC, content marketing, you, you name it, and they upsell it. And eventually uh, they, 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 they get some, some substantial amount of money from client. But of course, they help, they help the client as well. So this is main do speciality and main main uh, client database. But mm-hmm. now uh, do they actually working very uh, i wouldn't wouldn't when i joined i wouldn't think about it but if you look at the vertical SaaS, uh, uh for example your SaaS company and you producing a uh, scheduling software for dentist just just on, on top of my head dentist uh you know you go when you go on when you call to dentist and say oh can i have appointment that time that you just just you know, say, no we don't have as uh, this doctor on that time but we can get it to, to that. Okay, fine. Uh, but most of them, uh, funny enough, most of the dentists either don't have a website or have very, very uh, um, uh, basic. very basic website. Yeah, 
yeah, was looking forward. Basic website, which is not in, which you can not integrate with the software, which means uh, some people go on to say, they see that and they use a telephone, and nowadays still use a telephone to uh, make an appointment. So, and they say, look, we. we we will just add to your package a website. Uh, we'll do your website, and it will be integrated with our software. And people can just 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 do it online. And they say, well, yeah, why not? So uh, and Duda can see uh, Duda is doing the business now. We have about two hundred uh, clients like that. Two hundred sounds great, but if you're talking about Duda has like twenty thousand agencies as a client, you can see still 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 big big difference. So Duda goes into uh, uh, this this niche, and I think it's it's a plenty of business because surprisingly enough, so many small medium sized businesses they don't don't have a uh, don't have a website they use a facebook or something like that yeah because i think the, the whole concept of digital marketing scares a lot of traditional businesses and, and dentists funny enough way back in 99 when i was working as a sales manager for a, a web design company um, we were talking to dentists back then and i i basically was trying to pitch somebody on uh, like basically having a, a website built and they, they they agreed to have a website built because they didn't want to be the only dentist in that particular location not to have a website that was their motivation behind it rather than it being efficiency and effectiveness so what we ended up we, we built them the website and we said look this what this this website could do i mean like like dental practice is one of those it's a classic business where basically you want people to go and have like checkups probably once a year and see a hygienist once a year right so that's typically two appointments minimum every single person should have to, to do once a year. And what would happen is that this dentist would, would send out co postcards with a stamp on, right? <laughs> or six month period. They'd have somebody that would sort of sit there and write the cards out and say, you need to come in to see the day. I still get it now from my dentist. They still send out a letter to say, you should come in and have a checkup. And I'm thinking we, we are, we are so far past that. And I think so much of the, the decision-making is based upon the sophistication of the person actually doing it. And, and again, you can't blame dentists for not understanding it because they're dentists. Right? I don't know the first thing about teeth. They know everything about teeth and fillings and so on and so on. I know nothing about that. But they should defer to people who are experts. And I think that's where I think a lot of people, they try and do things themselves. I mean, I'm sure I could pick up a pair of pliers, grab a tooth and give it a good yank and it might come out. <laughs> it won't be the best way to do my dental work. So I, I kind of defer to a, an expert in that particular field. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. A lot of them they don't understand, but they probably shouldn't. As, as you said, uh, the question is if they listen. Uh, I'm pretty sure many of them listen, and for me, for me, it's absolutely clear. For me, especially because um, I'm most of the time I'm a foreigner. Sometimes I don't speak local language, so for me, it's much, much easier to do things online. Where I can check, change the language, or translate. For example, appointment, then try to call. And depends on the country. Obviously, if you need. Nordic, that everyone speaks English, uh, and uh, but for example, here in Slovakia, uh, when I have to call, it's, it's a problem. I don't speak Slovak, and they usually don't speak good enough English to to do it over the phone. So yeah. uh, I would I would definitely prefer. Well, of course, I understand the business is mostly for local people, not for foreigners who doesn't speak local language. But it's it's, it's just example. I, I do understand the importance. And and I think it's it's very easy. It's people who understood the importance, who goes with with this marketing uh, things, they they get more money, uh, or they just survive. And people who want, they want. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's they'll make more money, but sometimes it's they'll save a lot of money. Again, if you think of a, a dentist twenty five years ago, that instead of sending out, let's say they had a thousand patients, right? Thousand patients twice a year, two stamps times, so that's two thousand you know, basically 2,000 postcards per person per year, right? That, that That's a huge amount of money that they would be spending on posting that they didn't have to pay anymore. It's just literally an email that would get automatically sent out every six months to say, you need to see a dentist, you need to see a hygienist, done. And you could do the same thing. You need new tires, you need a kind of 
winter checkup. You need all sorts of different things. So much of it is about efficiency and effectiveness and understanding some of the technological capabilities that exist now. I mean, again, I'm a, I'm a huge, huge fan and proponent of using Notion, right? I use it kind of like as a second brain. So it, it'll be for like my tasks and all sorts of different things that I'll, I'll just put it into the, I can walk around, make recordings and it'll put it into my database and sort of set a flag and remind me and all that sort of stuff. Because again, I don't want to be walking around trying to remember what, what I need to do. I mean, I kind of went shopping with my wife this morning and we couldn't remember where we'd parked the car. I mean, I'm thinking, wow, we must be getting really, but, you know. Yes, yeah, very, very, very bad with parking car. And I always, when, it, when it's, it's a huge one, I always make a picture uh, with, a, with a number uh, and, and everything and send, send it to myself. So just to make sure. You... It's, it's funny, I do that quite often. If I, if I go traveling, um, one of the first things I do when I check into my hotel room is I take a, a picture of the door number. So I know what to, which room I'm in, because then that way, <laughs> if I do end up kind of sleepwalking and walking in the corridors at night or something like that, at least I know kind of which room I'm in. <laughs> We're getting old. <laughs> yeah, we are definitely getting old. Well, I am. I don't know about you, Anton. Um, so, so obviously the future for you could be that you may go back to Ukraine. You're not sure kind of like if that's going to happen or not. Um, again, if you, if you do go back, I wish you kind of, safe safe passage and, and hope it all kind of works out okay and hopefully this horrible war will kind of end at some point in time where do you see the um in, in, in terms of the influencer marketing kind of arena where do you see that being in the next three to five years let's not let's not talk about the war where do you see kind of influencer marketing? Yeah, I, I think it would be two uh two different influencer marketing. maybe they would even even uh, change your name because as i said i would call it creative marketing right. it yeah. will obviously go it will thrive and it, it, it will, will say its future is there for sure so uh, we will be asking uh, kardashian to vary uh, mm. our products or, or sell our products surely it, it will stay but i think uh, this old school relationship will be even uh, even more even more important in a way of uh, ai because ai can at least not now. I, I don't believe in five years' time AI will be able to build up a relationship with people. I hope I hope it won't, but I don't believe it's it's, it's going to happen within five or even ten years. Even ten years, who knows? Uh, so, which means uh, personal relationship would be very, very, very important. And so, people who can do that. Uh, as I said, they probably uh, will be still doing uh, influencer marketing very well and everything. Uh, actually, the interesting thing is a bad decision. When I thought about bad decision, I asked myself, can I can I think about really bad decision what I made? And I thought maybe maybe what, when I start doing uh, marketing things in 2015, I talked to Craig Campbell, who, who is a football He's a friend now, and but I was a friend at that time. And actually, he told me, don't do whatever you do, webinars and everything, go in and learn SEO. And probably was, was I wasn't technical enough or something, so I didn't. And I thought maybe it's, it's a bad decision because, for example, right now, for me, uh, because you can, you can see how many... Uh, people looking for, for good SEOs, and it's so easy. I, I, I'm not saying easy to do, I'm saying it's easy to sell yourself. You say, okay, I'm SEO with 10 years experience, for example. And uh, when I when I thinking about selling myself, I have a very, very, a lot of difficulties because I can't even tell what I'm doing because most of the people, they don't understand. So you have to spend what, what we've been doing with 40, 40 plus minutes. I was trying to explain what I'm doing. Most of HR they won't have 40 minutes for, for that. So I thought maybe it was a bad decision. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I should just learn some, something, which is, I'm not saying easy, but it's, it's easy to understand and, and sell. Yeah, Maybe. it's funny. Like you're talking about Craig. I mean, so I've, I've I've known Craig for many many years. Again, he's I don't even know if he's a good SEO. I'm, I'm assuming he is, right? But but it's sort of like he's a really really good creator. He's really good at personal branding, like PR, um, and actually building building his business and his speaking. Which, and again, I mean, he, he gets invited to speak at lots of conferences. But he does a very good job 
of both promoting his own involvement in the conference, but the conference itself. So again, as a conference organiser, you want your speakers to do that. You want them to kind of help put the, the yes, events that like you're a webinar. on the map. Because ultimately, if you have a, a person like Craig who's got maybe 120,000 subscribers on YouTube, if he puts on a thing and says, hey, I'm kind of uh, headlining a particular event, then... That's good for that's good for the event. I mean, you know, people might sort of watch it and say, "Hey, I like Craig. I like his content. I'm going to go to that event." So they'll buy a ticket to go to the event, and that's that's a person that they wouldn't have had had he not been putting in the effort before he gets to the show to actually tell people about it. So yeah, yeah, I absolutely, absolutely agree. Craig is a great businessman as well. So yeah, and and again, he doesn't spend a lot of money on clothes because he's he just has his. His uh, vests and his his shorts and his tattoos and again, yeah, he's got he's got he's got his own style. You that's his personal brand. That's that's yeah, what he's all about. In the same way that again, you know, with Jason, he's got his red shirt. I always see you. You're pretty much always wearing like an orange shirt. I don't know if you choose yes. to work for based on the color orange because like Sam Rush, like orange was their kind of primary color. And do this well. <laughs> Do do this as well has an orange color, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a joke. And before Sam Rush, I was working for unknown or very, very little known uh web promo Ukrainian company. It has uh, orange uh orange as well. So uh, obviously you be in English and if I sell uh, the future uh, uh is bright, the future is orange, you know what, what I'm talking about. I do I do know th- what you're talking about. So Anton, thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast. Obviously, in the show notes I'll include all the information about your, uh, your your charity where people can kind of go to kind of donate. Again, that would be fantastic. You know, again, like if, if you do if you do nothing else other than that from this particular episode, then fantastic. But I think Anton's given us some fantastic insight and there will, there will be all of the information about how you can reach out to Anton, uh, how you can kind of catch him. Uh, Anton, just like I said, just remains for me to thank you for being a fantastic guest. And hopefully at some point in time, uh, when the the kind of climate permits, we can kind of have a, an actual coffee across the table and maybe pick up the uh, the conversation. Yeah, it would, would be great. And thank you uh, for for having me. Yeah, fantastic, great. fantastic conversation. I like to do it. And we'll speak soon.